Hey everyone, we're at MSI's offices looking at the X570 boards and I'm joined by Linus. Linus, after the roast, I wanted to offer this product to you. It's the Expander Z. It's our new male enhancement pill. This totally solves everything. You just saved my computer and my marriage. Thank you oh, so absolutely. much, Steve. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm so <laughs> glad to be of service. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake C360 DDC hard tubing water cooling kit. If you're ready to dip your toes into the water and build your first open loop cooling system, the Thermaltake C360 DDC hard tubing kit comes with all of the components you need. The kit includes a 360 millimeter radiator, three 120 ARGB fans, a copper W4 ARGB water block for the CPU, a pump and res DDC combo, and all the fittings needed to build a full CPU open loop. Learn more at the link in the description below. So I, I guess that was our intro. That was Linus from Linus Tech Tips. We'll link him below if you want to check him out. And the roast is now live on YouTube. You should check that out, or you can just subscribe to Floatplane and get it there. Uh, so the motherboards, X570 stuff, Lisa Su, as of the time this goes up, has just talked about and announced the X570 chipset for AMD's new lineup of CPUs. We have some information on that. We have some information on the uh, chipset power consumption requirements, the uh, fans that you're gonna see on basically every motherboard with the new X570 chipsets, and then all the VRMs and MOSFET information as we go down the line. The first motherboard is MSI's X570 Godlike. For the most part, MSI has kept the same naming that they had for the most recent motherboard launches. So uh, Godlike, Ace, Pro Carbon, all the way down, Creation kind of in a different line on the end. Actually, let's start with the fans. So the chipset, you'll notice all these boards have small fans on them. These are 45 millimeter fans, and uh, they have three different profiles. So there's balance, silent, and boost. And then just depending on how much the noise bothers you, you can change that. The thing is with these, because the new chipset is running at around 11 watts when it's under load, it is uh, significantly higher than the X470 chipset, which is about 5.8 watts. So going up to 11 watts, active cooling is, uh, I'm not sure if we can say yet if it's a necessity, but it's certainly helpful. The biggest concern I think anybody in the comments will have, I'll preempt it, is about RMA and small fans dying. So a couple years ago, fans were pretty common on motherboards and the most common point of failure on them was dust clogging the fans and the bearings overheating. We'll see how that goes, but these are double ball bearing. They're rated for 50, 40, 50,000 hours, 50,000 hours, and they're connected by a cable, not pin contact. So if it were a problem, you'd send it to MSI, but hopefully it's just not an issue. This is a resurgence of fans on chipsets though, and that's why I'm bringing it up because it hasn't been really uh, an issue for quite a while now. So 11 watts versus 5.8, the difference is because of Gen 4, specifically PCIe Gen 4, for the uh, lane allocation, you're running 16 Gen 4 to the GPU, which is standard, and then four additional to an SSD. The motherboards, you'll want to check the manual for which slot is assigned to the CPU for M.2, because you, you don't just plug it into any of them, some of them do go to the chipset. And in theory, the latency will be a little bit better if it's direct CPU to, uh, to M.2 SSD communication rather than through the chipset. So for the rest of it, uh, the chipset, is of course running PCIe Gen 4 as well. This is entirely Gen 4, there's no Gen 3 on this. And that is again, the, the reason for the boost in the TDP. The, uh, the PCB on this particular board is different from the rest. So the PCB is supposed to be server grade, uh, which is I guess a 150GS material and we'll have Buildzoid talk about what he thinks of that, what that means as opposed to standard PCB material. So check our Buildzoid VRM analysis videos for those. We will have those up shortly. He's going to have photos of these uh, today. The rest of it. Uh, so this board is set up with a VRM that's running a 14 plus 4 plus 1 vCore, vSOC, and vDIM. And then for the controller, it's a 35201. We've seen a lot of those. For the, the uh, MOSFET, it's an IR3599. It's a 70 amp MOSFET. This is an eight layer PCB. Creation is a six layer PCB. And then the others are uh, are things we'll talk about as we go through them. The launch date for this, not sure right now if Lisa Sue is going to be announcing the launch date, but if she does, we'll, we'll post it in the comments section and pin it to the top. A couple other specs of note, B clock. So we've gotten on MSI in the past about BCLK and having it higher than 100.0000000. And in the past it's been 100.5, 100.8, which does affect scores. These are all going to be 100 flat, which is fantastic. So we're really happy to see that. The memory stock frequencies should be 3200 for two dim and then 2067 for four dim. Obviously you go through XMP or overclocking if you want to change that. Uh, and then 
all these boards are daisy chain layout for the memory, so not T topology, it's daisy chain topology, and that is also something that we've talked about in the past in PCB analysis videos, if you're curious about those. Memory overclocking should have pretty good potential this time. We'll talk about this more as the product of CPUs near launch, but you should be, I'm not gonna give a number because I'm not sure how accurate it is, but it should be better overclocking uh, than previous generations on the memory for memory frequencies. There are no big BIOS changes by MSI for this generation. And this board we have a price on, so the godlike is supposed to be, oh wait, I actually can't say the prices. So I guess you'll just get the prices for everybody else throughout the show and then MSI's will not be listed. But if we end up being allowed to list MSI's prices, we'll put them in the comment section below. So unfortunately, I can't give you those. Uh, I'm sure it's a very lucky price though, because that would, I mean, that would make sense. Anyway, for the rest of the boards, there's the Meg X570 Ace, the spec on that one, We've got VRM details as well. That's 12 plus 2 plus 1, 60 amp power stage, uh, 35201 once again. And then the MOSFET is 3555, no OLED. The other one has an OLED. This is the Gaming Pro Carbon. It's a 10 to 1 uh, V-Core SOC and then memory for the VRM. This is a dual end MOSFET, 3111. We'll talk about that in PCB analysis videos. Gaming Edge, not going to talk too much about this, but uh, 821 on semi TBD for the power stages. And then the creation down here is a six layer PCB. The signifier for creation is 10G LAN and it's a 1421 VRM layout with uh, 60 amp power stages IR 3555. As for the rest, the biggest question now is power requirements and we don't have great answers on those but there's a 16 core that's well documented out there. There's a 12 core and then there's other things below that six and probably eight. The 16 core we have heard it might approach something like 300 watts when overclocked with water and don't know what voltages, don't know what frequencies. But if that's the case, then definitely more towards that end of the line is what you want for 16 core overclocking. Because as you get down lower end, these are really not meant for the VRMs are not spec for pushing a 16 core CPU to 300 plus watts. But uh, again, towards that half of the line, you'll be better suited. So we'll talk about that more in the more hard details as we get them. As always, check back. For additional coverage at Computex, you can subscribe for more, or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly. I'll see you all next time.